Hey folks, good morning, good morning, good morning to everybody. It's a busy day here around Green Acres Ranch. Getting the kids ready for school. A couple changes today. Fatima is going to take Upau to school for the first time. Well, the first time she's taken him to school. And Flo is going to take Forrest G to his class, which she's done many times. But the big excitement in the news is that Fatima is taking Upau to class. Now, Flo reported on the first day of Upau's class that it was much more stressful taking this one to class than it was taking Forrest G to class. So Fatima is in for a treat. So let's ask Flo Flo here. Well, Flo, tell us about Upal's class. You said it was stressful? Yeah, not, not the same with Forrest with Forrest G. It's that talk. It's someone like he's not really talking, but Upal can talk. Mom, what this mom? So he's very noisy at his class? Yeah. Okay, so there you have it, folks. But the but are you ready? The teacher of Opa, she like Opa because she said Opa is kind of very behave. Ah, behave? Oh. Mala. So he behaves? Yeah. The way they see Opa, Opa but me, what All right. So that's what we got going on, oh, folks. Just getting the kids serious? ready. John no. John brought Flo it over here on the motorbike. Where she promptly takes a shower. No, it's not. Flo, I'm curious, why you always get up so late? Yeah, because she sleeps late. Uh, great, great answer there. Uh, Flo's back to going to college. She's going to college at night. They call it a college. I call it the supper club. They go over there and eat, hang out, chismas, do dance routines. But there ain't much learning that goes on. That's my opinion. Everybody's entitled to the opinion. But, okay, so we got John John in the e bike on station. All right, so everybody ready to go to school? Got our chariot right there. Why don't you buy a car, you cheap? I got a limo. We'll be right out, my good man. Hold him up, Maria Mercedes. Hey, where's our D car? It's in my bag. Okay, good deal. You got water in there? Yes, sir. Now, ladies, let's go. Dig, dig, dig. We're late. You know, Panty Brip, Mana. Hello? Hey, number nine. We're late for school. So, here's the thing it's like, Mondays and Fridays, you know, at the school, they have flag raising, ceremony, what have you. So you got to be there 15 minutes early. But for whatever reason, my crew seems to be always pushing the limit. Even though I'm wearing a watch these days, it's hard to get everybody on the same sheet of music and out the door and get there on time on Mondays and Fridays. And what happens is, and I totally understand it, once they get ready to kick off the ceremony, so, uh, you know, the security guards secure the door. Nobody in, nobody out to disturb the ceremony. I get it, I'm all for it. So there was a time before when we got there late and we're standing outside with the late crew, you know, trying to peer over the, you know what I'm talking about, right? When you're late to the party and you just, you get locked out. And I don't like that feeling. I try to explain it to them. Hey, this is not professional. We should not be in this crowd standing out here ever again. So I sort of cracked the whip, you know. I'm trying to explain time. And if you've heard, heard me talk throughout the years, many of my videos I discuss time and how the Filipinos are more just lackadaisical about time and being on time. Filipino time. That's what they say here. That means you're late. Everybody's late. So today, I'm like trying to crack the whip. Hey, the time, the time, the time. They made some last minute changes where Flo's taking Forrest G today. She's taking Upau. Okay, whatever. But Flo shows up, needs to take a shower. I'm like, what? why aren't you ready? She goes straight to the shower. 
pushes the envelope. Comes out in a pair of little short shorts. I said, hey, that's not appropriate for the school. Put some pants on. <laughs> Takes more time. We roll in there. Luckily, we got through the gate, but they were already starting to play the music, and the kids are starting to come out and line up. So I just push Maria off into the crowd where she goes to where she's got to go. I circle around, you know. Well, actually, I went, went straight down the side, got her bags in her classroom, and then snuck out the other way and barely made it out the door before he secured the door. No big deal, right? If you, you know, if it, you got to sit there for 10, 15 minutes of the ceremony, but, uh, you know, typically my job, I go, I help him get to class, and then, you know, old single dad's got to get the day started. But it was that close. The dude was closing the door. I'm like, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir. He let me out, and then, hey, so if I did mind. Thanks to you and your sister being late, we the kids were late today. Are you concerned about that? Nope. Baby, you should be concerned. We should be concerned. We should always be on time, which means 15 minutes early, prior to the start of the event. Shh. It's, the, it's already black. When I walked in, they were already starting to line up, so I had to... Right, so, uh, but the, the singing in there? Right. The music was going on. <laughs> Maria's class was already lined up, so I had to send her straight to the line and take the bags to the class myself. I barely made it out the gate. No big deal. Because of you, you and your sister. No big deal. Because your sister showed up with no shower, inappropriate uniform, No, talking to the wall. I'll just talk to you, George. Yeah, so it was it's frustrating right. this morning, George. Right. So what I'm gonna have to do, Mondays and Fridays, I gotta get up extra early. Extra, extra early. Extra. Yeah, which means you got to get up extra, extra early. Because five o'clock, we can't seem to pull it off to get to school on time. Let me back it up to 0430 wake up call on Mondays and Fridays, but the ma. What? Ready to listen in English? Mondays and Fridays, we're gonna wake up at 0430. Give you extra 30 minutes to make sure the babies get to school on time. Okay? Uh -uh. I do appreciate though, this morning she made me some real coffee. I ordered some real coffee from Lazada. First real coffee that I've had at the house in a long time. You got more, you got more in here. Yeah, baby, pour me another cup of coffee, please. Good <coughs> coffee from, where's it from, Batangas? Got me some real coffee, life is good. You've never been here, you order coffee, they give you a packet, it's called three in one. It's like hot chocolate. Like you'd get in America, like Swiss Miss, but it tastes different. It's not coffee, but um, I don't want to say it's difficult because if you have a coffee maker at your house, you can have coffee anytime you want. But if you're out and about and you try to find brewed coffee, it's not easy uh, if you're outside the major cities. Did you see my knife? Did I see your knife? Well... Uh, which which one of my knives oh, are you yeah, referring to that you have destroyed? Check the children's backpack. Bella. <laughs> uh, anyhow, folks, that's just a slice of my morning here in the Philippines. Good morning to you. If you're watching our show in the evening, I'll say good evening to you. I hope everything is going well in your world. It's a crazy world that we're living in these days. It, it absolutely is. And you just got to appreciate and cherish every day, especially with your kids. My goodness, another school shooting in the U.S. yesterday. Heart goes out to all those folks affected by that, but it just makes me cherish my children even more. Give them extra hugs when I drop them off from school, extra hugs when they come home. Um, 
my goodness. So I have this thing with Maria. And I pick her up from school. And this is this is the good thing so far. Knock on wood. Well, I got bamboo. So let me knock knock on some bamboo. Maria so far. As far as I can tell. She she doesn't lie to me. Okay? And what I mean by that is like when I when I ask her and I've explained to her, I'd rather you just tell me the truth and let's just deal with whatever we have to deal with. But every day I ask Maria, you know, were you good for the teacher today? And then she'll get this smile, right? She smiles, she's like, you know, gets that little Maria smile. And at first she was telling me like, no sir. I said, what happened? She like, I'm always talking. And that's what her teachers will tell me. You know, she does good with her, with her academics, but she's always talking to her classmates, right? That's her, her flaw. But now, since she's understanding numbers much more, obviously, she's giving me percentages. <laughs> I was like, are you, were you good today? Uh, 50%. Like 50%, okay, well, what was bad, what was good? And it's always, she's just too talkative, always talking to her classmates. But a couple of days ago, honey, she came home with a stamp for the first time. She had a stamp on her hand. So she got a, she got a good. And, and folks, she's good to the teacher as well. Like a couple days I show up to pick her up. And I'm like, I can't find her. I go to her normal places. Cause when school gets out, the kids don't want you to pick them up right when school is out. They want you to pick them up about 15, 20 minutes late so they can play. So if I show up on time, she's disappointed, right? I'm like, Dad, can I play? I'm like, well, everybody's waiting on us outside. You know, how about tomorrow? So what we've learned is, it's okay to be late picking them up on purpose, 15 minutes, sometimes 20. Uh, a lot of the moms will sit around and just let them play and they're doing cheese miss or whatever, so it's no big deal. So, uh, I for forgot where I was going with that. I was talking about picking her up, letting her play. Oh, I know where I was going with that. Fuck's getting old, 51 year old pirate. Trying to remember details. Short-term memory is just shot. Might have something to do with all them beers I've drank for about four decades. Anyhow, I couldn't find her one day. I'm like, where is that girl? And she's never in her own classroom, you know, because once they get released, they're out playing, they're in other people's classrooms. Last place I looked was her classroom. And she's in there helping the teacher clean the classroom. She was the only one in there. It's just her and the teacher cleaning up, you know, sweeping the floor and do whatever they were doing, cleaning up. So she spent her whole playtime helping the teacher clean the class. Maybe it was her time, her duty, I, I don't know. But anyhow, just proud of her. Proud of her and proud of the fact that I get to pick them up, take them to school, you know. It's just, I don't know, it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to start my day folks the weather here is windy right now it is cool I did I, I talked yesterday the day before about you know thinking about the heat of next year dreaming about moving to Baguio to cooler weather but like right now I'm telling you this wind is blowing it is cool I bet you it was really cool in the village last night what you think baby yeah. folks in the village in the village, I hate to use the word cold because it's subjective, but it it gets very cool on the border of cold at night in the village. You know, when you wake up in the morning, it's sort of like you're camping in the in the, in the fall in America. I don't know what it is. I guess with the way you know, it's like sort of a ridge, a ridge line that surrounds that with. I don't want to say a mountain, but there's some elevation, then you have the water, and then they're down sort of in a bowl. Somehow or another, that breeze just like comes over there. It like comes over the hill and must just go down 
it's cold. It's very cool in the village at night. Much cooler than it is here uh, in the evenings. I mean, we have we run the aircon to sleep with, but last night it was so cool here. I think we could have got away with just opening up the windows, and opening up the house. Only problem with that. We don't have a big problem with mosquitoes here. We don't have a big, the flies have went away. We don't have the, uh, you know, once it came that first rain and I guess, uh, not the word launched, launched all those fly larvae that had just been waiting to hatch. We had a huge fly problem. But now the flies have chilled out, went away. We don't have any mosquitoes here. But like if we open up this house at night, I think the biggest thing would be like maybe a stray cat jumping in the window. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I'm just talking out loud. A lot of people ask, hey, do you have a big problem with mosquitoes and flies and bugs like that? And at this location, we don't. Just had that little problem with the flies, but everybody does when they say when they plant corn, but really it's when the first rains come. Flies were, were really bad, but they're back to being normal. Um, and where we live is very, very few mosquitoes, if any. Anyhow, good morning to you. Drinking my real coffee. I talked about how the old lady put a hole or a dent, a huge dent in this coffee mug in the bottom of it, right? And it doesn't seem to have a hole. It seems to be a dent. And it might be my imagination, but it feels like now that the outside of this cup is it's too hot. It's hotter than it used to be. But the bottom is fine. I don't feel anything on the bottom. But I, I do feel heat on the side of this thing. And I'm just wondering if she put such a tiny, minute hole. I don't know. Is it vacuum sealed or is it just double wall? I don't know. I'm just talking out loud because I'm, I'm just still a little bit of upset that she used my Yeti cup to make ice and then took took a fake Gerber strong arm and was chiseling it out and put a little little indentation in the bottom of this coffee mug that I've had for a long time. I guess it's time for a new coffee mug. I've talked about this. I'll keep saying that. You, you gotta understand. A lot of folks don't. A lot of folks are. This is the first time they're watching our show. And then a lot of y'all have watched every video and I sound like a broken record talking, talking about the same topics. But uh, anyhow, we missed out on the, the Stanley Cup craze. Had no idea that everybody in America switched from, I thought everybody wanted a Yeti Cup. That's all I got is Yeti Cups. And then they switched over to Stanley and there's a big run on Stanley Cups. I don't know if that trend is still going on. Uh, but I checked out some Stanley products and stuff, and I said I showed it to the ladies, and they want some of those Stanley cups. So I don't know, but because the old lady has destroyed, semi-destroyed, damaged my Yeti cup, maybe the next one I get is some Stanley gear, just to uh, give it a run. I mean, all these things are made in China, so it's not like I'm an emotionally attached to any any of this Chinese made crap, right? But it is a good piece of gear. A good design piece of gear. I just wish they would make make these products like this somewhere other than China. Maybe I'll brand that. Products that are OTC. Maybe they already have that brand. Maybe I'm just quoting something I read subliminally. But you can't, it's hard like when you try to promote brands and try to promote products that are only made in America, it's difficult these days. It's absolutely difficult. And so, like I said, I, you know, I did that video where I purged every piece of clothing in my closet that was made in China. I only kept stuff that's made in places other than China. OTC, baby. OTC. Bangladesh, bring it on. Honduras, bring it on. Mexico, the U.S., bring it on. I'll wear it. 
And I might change that. I might change to where I, I just dig deep enough to where everything I wear is made in America. But right now, the, the, the easiest furtive step was OTC. Anywhere other than China. Other than China. It's like saving Private Ryan. Sir, where's the rally point? Anywhere but here. Or should I call it ABC? Anywhere but China. That's better. ABC. Anywhere but China. That's the products I want to promote. Wear. Feature in my show are products ABC. Anywhere but China. Hmm. Because folks, why has China got just quick politics? Why why is China the rise of China? Why have they got to the point that they're out there in the South China Sea, the West Philippine Sea, ramming Philippine ships with impunity when they're very close to Philippine shores? It's because we as Americans decades ago started worrying about the bottom dollar and said, oh shit. We can manufacture this crap in China and get it shipped back here for cheaper and make more money. And through all that manufacturing that we gave them, all that work, it's allowed the Chinese Communist Party, okay, their government, they're the modern day Nazis, Chinese Communist Nazis, what I call them. Xi Jinping is the new Hitler, that's my opinion. Because we gave them all that work and sent all of our manufacturing over there, that's why they're where they're at, where they're able to, you know, build all these ships and these weapon systems and go out there and, you know, do what they're doing. Truly, it's our fault. If we if we still manufactured everything in America, the, the Chinese would still be weak like any other I hate to use the word third world nation but they'd be a third world nation how do you how do you do battle with the Chinese Communist Party I hate to say it but you have to weaken their economy is that harsh because it affects their population well absolutely but you got two ways to deal with them. You either take them on militarily, or B, their economy crashes and they go by the wayside like the USSR. So just imagine if the whole world stopped buying their fucking products. It'd be like the Russian Navy back when they were, or the, well, the Soviet Navy. You couldn't pay their light bill back right when they, they were being dissolved. You know, I remember a story of a, a Soviet Navy base got the electricity turned off because they weren't paying the bill. They had to send armed personnel down to the electric company and force them to turn it back on because it was a nuclear sub base. They, they kind of needed electricity. So anyhow, uh, if, you, if, if you're sitting somewhere and not paying attention to the news, that's going on with China in the West Philippine Sea, then you might not understand why I talk about this, but I like that new branding, ABC. Go into a clothing store, say, hey, where's that made? You don't gotta say, hey man, it's gotta be made here. It's gotta... Just say, hey man, just show me something that's made anywhere but China, and I'll take a look at it. But if that motherfucker says made in China, no. ABCs. Started out with my clothing. I said, you know what? I'm gonna purge my camera gear of anything that's that has the made in China label on it. The problem is I love this old camera, it's made in China. But my new FX3 is made in Thailand. Tripod made in Italy. I could do it. Got a microphone coming made in Germany. 
all the little pieces and parts and all the little hardware and stuff. Damn, I'd have to find some duct tape made in America to tape that shit on there because all them little parts are made in China. But that piece of gear back there, that's the Lodge six quart double dutch oven from the chef collection made in america by the good folks down in south pittsburgh tennessee my friends what you making back there baby food. what food. your food what does my food consist of this morning get you a closer look what you cook for big dad? Pasta vegetables? I don't know. Pasta vegetables? Yeah. Baby. Why do you have my peppers in the tabo? I know, but the tabo is used to wash somebody's backside. really good I might let you use my Gerber strong on made in America by the good folks in Portland Oregon but under supervision because if I leave it out here it's gonna get destroyed it's a boat. I didn't go Baby, this is your sister's dress that she wore this morning. Yeah. And you're using it as a dish rag. Uh, that's, what, that's what she wore over here. I know, but you don't know what that dress has been involved in. The thing could be a biohazard and you're using it to wipe off the cooking table. Oh. Is that filthy water? Oh, oh. oh okay. 
Beautiful in the presentation. Basically, tastes like Thousand Island with bacon bits. It is absolutely delicious, especially putting it over some type of noodles that are spicy. I mean, I want you to check that out. There you go, right there. That is an absolute breakfast, lunch, or supper of champions here. Folks, you hear me complaining? And most of the time I'm not complaining, but I am explaining. When you live away from the major cities, anywhere in the world, the food options get limited as far as what you can go out and buy and a lot of the ingredients that you can procure. So a lot of things you have to cook by yourself. The issue is, Okay, these ladies, the only thing that they really know how to cook is Filipino food, and it's very limited on the Filipino food they can cook. They're, they're, not, they're not chefs. So, the few meals that Fatima has like perfected 
Okay, number one is the spicy spaghetti. She makes that spicy spaghetti. It's like Paki Mao noodles from Thailand. I put a little bit of that sauce on there and I am in heaven. Only thing I'm wishing I had was, you know, a couple pieces of bread to go with it, but I'm not complaining. The other thing that's really delicious is Flo's fried rice. She can make a fried rice that's absolutely delicious. I really enjoy that. And then Fatima, her fried chicken, delicious. Everything else in life that's on the menu, <laughs> but I do have to brag on their successes. Watch this. We can go more, a little bit more smoky Thousand Island. Again, just like bacon bits are in there. Mmm. That's perfect. You think that she put too much cayenne pepper, but I truly love spicy. You know, I love Thai food, lived in Thailand a long time. But I love jalapeno peppers, that's like eating candy. So I love the spiciness, put a little bit of heat in my palate. Because these ladies are not big on spicy foods for the most part. So this is a dish for me, custom made for the king. I'm down with the cayenne pepper. If I had like a side of jalapenos and some cheese sauce to go on top, oh. Anyhow, I'm dreaming about Mexican food. I need to showcase your beauty. So beautiful today. This dude is still on uh, Peppa the Pig. Hey man, time to go to school, buddy. Time to go, man. Oh. Oh.